Here is John Kennedy on August the 13th, 1962, giving a radio and TV address about cutting income tax rates across the board for everyone in order to counter the recession. The worst deficit comes from a recession. And if we can take the proper action in the proper time, this can be the most important step we could take to prevent another recession. That is the right time to make tax cuts, both for your family budget and the national budget, resulting from a permanent basic reform and reduction in our rate structure, a creative tax cut, creating more jobs and income, and eventually more revenue. And the right time for that kind of bill, it now appears, in the absence of an economic crisis today, and if the job is to be done in a responsible way, is January 1963. Such a bill will be presented to the Congress for action next year. It will include an across-the-board, top-to-bottom cut in both corporate and personal income taxes. It will include long-needed tax reforms that logic and equity demand. And it will date that cut in taxes to take effect as of the start of next year, January 1963. The billions of dollars this bill will place in the hands of the consumer and our businessmen will have both immediate and permanent benefits to our economy. Every dollar released from taxation that is spent or invested will help create a new job and a new salary. And these new jobs and new salaries can create other jobs and other salaries and more customers and more growth for an expanding American economy. And next we have John F. Kennedy's address of December 14, 1962 to the Economic Club of New York explaining why you cut tax rates across the board for everyone in order to stimulate an economy and pull a country out of a recession. The soundest way to raise the revenues in the long run is to cut the rates now. And the reason is that only full employment can balance the budget and tax reduction can pave the way to that employment. The purpose of cutting taxes now is not to incur a budget deficit, but to achieve the more prosperous expanding economy which can bring a budget surplus. Ronald Reagan on October 22, 1981, signing the Tax Reform Act. Millions of working poor will be dropped from the tax rolls altogether, and families will get a long overdue break with lower rates and an almost doubled personal exemption. We're going to make it economical to raise children again. Flatter rates will mean more reward for that extra effort, and vanishing loopholes and a minimum tax will mean that everybody and every corporation pay their fair share. And that's why I'm certain that the bill I'm signing today is not only an historic overhaul of our tax code and a sweeping victory for fairness, it's also the best anti-poverty bill, the best pro-family measure, and the best job creation program ever to come out of the Congress of the United States. And now that we've come this far, we cannot... Now we've come this far, we cannot, we will not allow tax reform to be undone with tax rate hikes. We must, re we must restore certainty to our tax code and our economy. And I'll oppose with all my might any attempt to raise tax rates on the American people. And I hope that all here will join with me to make permanent the historic progress of tax reform. Next we have Ronald Reagan. On May 28, 1985, summarizing what four years of the Tax Reform Act had accomplished for the American economy. In 1981, our critics charged that letting you keep more of your earnings would trigger an inflationary explosion, send interest rates soaring, and destroy our economy. Well, we cut your tax rates anyway by nearly 25 percent. And what that helped trigger was falling inflation falling interest rates, and the strongest economic expansion in 30 years. Even Barack Obama seemed to get it in an interview on MSNBC with Chuck Todd on August 5th of 2009, 
when he stated that you do not raise taxes during a recession. So I guess what I'd say to Scott is uh, his economics are right. You don't raise taxes in a recession. We haven't raised taxes in a recession, but you we might don't have a... Okay. You might for the high, for some of the wealthy. Uh, the, uh, we have not uh, proposed a tax hike for the wealthy that would take effect in the middle of a recession. It, the, even the proposals that have come out of Congress, which, by the way, were different from the proposals I put forward, mm-hmm. still wouldn't kick in until after the recession was over. And now, in the midst of a recession, with 10% unemployment and zero growth, we have the same Obama proposing $1.5 trillion in new taxes. So one more time, why do you cut taxes for everyone in order to raise revenues, create jobs, expand an economy, and pull a country out of a recession? Let's go back and listen to John F. Kennedy once again summarize how a rising tide raises all boats. The billions of dollars this bill will place in the hands of the consumer and our businessmen will have both immediate and permanent benefits to our economy. Every dollar released from taxation that is spent or invested will help create a new job and a new salary. And these new jobs and new salaries can create other jobs and other salaries. And more customers and more growth for an expanding American economy. And that, my friend, is Taxation Economics 101. And it's been proven over and over and over again.